Okay, so the last um, body area that you could be tested on for this next proficiency is the wrist. So I'm going to have you rest your hand flat down. Now one thing to be really mindful of with the wrist is your wrist naturally, and I will see if I can, you're going to go for a ride camera. One thing that naturally happens with the wrist is if you're going down, see how right now there's that gap underneath her wrist? I'm going to have you curl your fingers. That's what drops your wrist down to be flush with the IR. So we have to have that flexion of the hand to drop the wrist down. Okay. So again, coming up above, just so you can see a little bit more clearly. This you're just centering to the mid-carpal area, so there's not much fancy to it other than that hand curling. I'm going to move this down just a little. Come down to the mid-carpal area. I like to include the whole metacarpal because you're supposed to get a fourth of that forearm, and that usually gets that pretty successfully for you. I think Meryl says a half of the metacarpal, but that's much too small. Again, radiating pain. Uh, is real, so you want to make sure that you have enough room where if there was an injury somewhere on that forearm, it could cause the wrist pain and not actually be a carpal that's injured. So, I'm going to put my marker down, and again, I'm in that mid-carpal area. Look for me one more time. Sorry, you know I'm picky. And that is your PA wrist. Moving from the PA wrist to the oblique and the lateral is really easy. One thing I wanted to touch on though is you guys have to know your techniques for what's considered average. Um, and in this specific program we say the PA wrist is 54 at 2, the oblique wrist is 57 at 2, the lateral wrist is uh, 60 at 2. And this mirrors your hand techniques as well. The sooner you can get it down that your techniques are based off thickness, the better you'll be at knowing techniques in general. So right now our PA wrist, that's, you know, just a little thick. When I go to my PA oblique, so now I'm just rotating to 45, that's a little bit thicker. That's why we go up to 57. So in this image, we're, again, we're just rotating to uh, 45 degrees, centering to that mid-carpal area, but everything else is the same. If the patient wanted to for comfort, they could unreal unclench uh, their hand a little bit to rest their hand if that was more comfortable. But again, 57 at 2 for this image. For the lateral, now we're going to stack and make sure that they're situated directly one on top of another. Another good idea for the lateral projection, just to make sure the patient's in true lateral, is I'm going to have you lift up for me real quick. And I'm going to actually have you kind of turn your body so you're facing me and then have your patient kind of lean in so that your elbow is at this 90 and then still at that mid-carpal area. Lift up for me real quick, right back down. And then call me that way. A lot of times that just helps the patient get into the lateral position a slightly more effectively. But again, now this is a little bit thicker yet than the oblique, so now we're going up to 60 at 2. So again, 60 at 2, lateral position, mid-carpal area, rotating down to the 45, 57 at 2, still centered to that mid-carpal area. And then your PA projection, fingers curled underneath the uh, metacarpal and centering to that mid-carpal area that is now at 54 at 2. So those are your basic ones. And then we do a couple of images for the scaphoid. So I'm going to let you face forward again for me. And I'm going to turn this back to lengthwise. And so our first one we're going to do is just simple ulnar deviation. And again, remember, it's rad to be an x-ray tech. So ulnar deviation is on the fifth digit side. I'm going to have you rest your hand down. And this image, again, is looking specifically for the scaphoid. If you flex your hand a little bit or the patient's thumb, the snuff box is kind of where you're centering to. That's right down. Basically, if you go directly below the metacarpal of the first digit, it's approximately where you're going to want to center. That's where that scaphoid lives. Okay? So I'm going to have her hand in ulnar deviation. That ulnar deviation pulls those other carpals away from that scaphoid.
and you palmate tight on this image because you're just looking at the scaphoid. We don't care about the other carpels at all. Lift up for me real quick. Again, I want to get my part as centered on the cassette as possible. I don't expect you guys to collimate this small. You're still learning, so don't, don't try to be a hero. Just get it started where you're at. And that would be your ulnar deviation scaphoid image. Okay? The last projection, in your Merrill's book, it has your hand flat. So it would have the hand just straight flat like that. We're not going to teach it that way. We're going to continue to be an ulnar deviation because this next picture is also for the scaphoid. And again, pulling that into ulnar deviation gets those um, carpal bones away from the scaphoid. And this projection usually is done in a series. Often, this is your stature method, often done in a 0 20 40 series or a 0 15 30 series. We're going to do the 20 degree angle today because that's what we've always done. So we're just going to practice that. So we're doing a 20 degree angle towards the patient's body. So we'll rotate the 20 degrees for our, our collimator head. And we're still gonna center to the scaphoid. And you're gonna use your measuring tape and measure specifically to that landmark. Right now I'm a little long, so I'm going to come down and in, and that's going to get us closer to our 40 degree or 40 SID. And again, so close collimation because we only care about that scaphoid. This angle is going to elongate that scaphoid, so it's going to stretch it out. So if there's small hairline fractures, you're going to be able to see it better because of the angle of this tube. So you're still centering everything the way that it was centered for your last exam. It's just now when you're doing it, the difference is, is how the tube is positioned. So from a side view, you can see that this tube has that 20 degree angle on it and it's aimed towards that scaphoid, okay? So again, still an ulnar deviation going right to that scaphoid projection. And this is your stetcher method without the sponge.